Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today we're going to do an updated version of a previous video that we had done discussing different ways of installing a cistern pump. Specifically, we're going to go over installation of a pressure tank and, and tank T controls for your pump. And this would work on not only a cistern, but a spring tank or a well. These will be the methods that you'll use to install. With pump technology being the way it is, you don't need a traditional pressure tank to operate your pump. Specifically, Grunfoss has come out with some really great pump technologies that have revolutionized the installation of a standard water supply pump. If you have a jet pump that you need, I would recommend the, our uh, Grunfoss MQ series which has a built-in bladder, but also has a flow control built-in so you don't need to install an external pressure switch. And it has run-dry protection so that if it detects a lack of water, it automatically shuts the pump down. So this is a great option for your water supply if you need a jet pump. We also have the submersible version. This is a Grunfoss SBA series pump, which also has built-in uh, run-dry protection, namely in the float switch and it has a built-in flow switch that detects water flow, water demand, and with this system, you also don't need to plumb in a pressure tank. You just hook up your supply line into the top of the pump, run it into your house, and hook it up to uh, your household supply, and you're, you're ready to go. So if you really want to simplify your installation, these are two great ways of doing so. If you are looking to start the installation of a traditional cistern or well pump, you'll likely be looking to install a pressure tank with the system as well. And I'm just going to briefly go over how to install the components, not only of your pump, but also of your pressure tank to ensure that you have a functioning, well-installed system. If you're using a submersible type pump, it will be in the tank or in your well casing. Your wire will come up to the top of your cistern tank, your spring tank. There'll be a, a watertight box that will send the, the power supply back into the house along with your discharge pipe from the pump. There will be a water supply coming into the house as well. Both the electric and the water supply are going to run directly into your pressure tank. This is a well-made 20 gallon pressure tank. This is our most popular, most common size pressure tank. And with this particular pressure tank, you'll have a few different components. You have your tank T, which is a brass T fitting specifically for pressure tanks. The end of the tank T threads into directly into the bottom of the pressure tank. There is a, a port there in the bottom. This connects to, you'll put Teflon tape or, or a, a thread seal on the threads, turn it in and tighten it with a, with a pipe wrench, get it good and tight. Uh, you'll want to make sure that when you install the tank T into the pressure tank, that these quarter inch ports are facing upwards. And in the quarter inch ports, you'll thread two things in. One, your pressure switch. And to mount your pressure switch, you'll need this quarter inch nipple. And so you'll thread the nipple in and then you'll, you'll put in your pressure switch. And there are two types of pressure switches. There's a standard pressure switch and there's a low level cutoff pressure switch. I won't go into detail between the, in the differences between the two here. We have other videos uh, that we'll link to that describe those, those uh, pressure switches. In, in this case, we'll assume that we're just using a standard pressure switch and you'll notice the quarter inch uh, female port on the pressure switch that threads directly into the, this quarter inch nipple. The reason that we elevate the pressure switch is that without it, we wouldn't have clearance. If we, if we just mounted this pressure switch directly into this quarter inch port, we wouldn't have clearance to also put in our next item, which is a pressure gauge. There are two main types of pressure gauges. There's oil filled and air filled. This particular one is an oil filled. And when we take this out of the packaging, that this too has quarter inch threads and this threads into the second quarter inch port on the tank T. And these are, by the way, all components that come in our tank, uh, our, our pump control and tank T kit on our website. So we have a pressure switch, pressure gauge. Now we have two half inch ports on the front end of the tank T and we're gonna put in a pressure relief valve. It's very important that we, that we include this in our system. What this does is if the pressure reaches a certain threshold, in this case, printed on the relief valve, you'll see 100 PSI. If the pressure builds up to 100 PSI in your, in your water lines, 
instead of risking the, all your plumbing blowing or the pressure tank actually blowing or, or expanding, what we want is the water pressure to be relieved through this port here. And that's exactly why this is in here. We want to make sure that, that we have either 75 PSI or 100 PSI pressure relief valve in the system. The second port, we're going to install a valve. We have a standard half inch boiler drain and we have a sample tap. Here in Ohio, we use sample taps on all of our cistern installations. Basically, this is ensuring that you can't hook up a garden hose and risk backflowing contaminated water into your water supply. So you, you have an option, but this is, this is standard, the half inch boiler drain. We're gonna put that into the second half inch port. And usually what we do is we cock it to the side, just like that. The reason it's useful to have this boiler drain is because you, you may want to hook a garden hose to this to drain out your pressure tank if you ever need to service it or service your plumbing. This is a great way to do that your water inlet coming from your tank or your well will be coming in one side of the tank T, uh, feeding the house through the other side and it doesn't matter which is which. Or you can even cap off one of these ends and just have a T in the line. And as long as this is in your plumbing, it, the pressure tank will still be utilized. It is recommended to elevate your pressure tank at least eight inches above the, your slab level. Uh, and the reason for that is you want to be able to access this valve. You want to be able to fully drain out the pressure tank and having that extra clearance really aids in, in being able to do that effectively. On the electrical end of things, I mentioned earlier that both your pressurized water line and your power supply feeding the pump will be coming into the house at the same point. We already talked about how the water line will be connected to the tank T. Now you're going to run your electric line from the, the cistern into the pressure switch, wire that up, and then have your power supply from your electric panel go to the pressure switch directly. And it needs to be a dedicated circuit. Anytime you have a pump involved, that, that same circuit can't run any other devices. It has to be straight from the panel to this pressure switch. That is the function of the pressure switch, to receive wires from the panel and to send the power supply out to the pump. And of course, this pressure switch controls the on-off function of the pump. There are three main types of pressure switches, 2040 pressure switches, 3050 pressure switches, and 4060 pressure switches. They indicate the cut in and cut off pressure of the switch. It's pre-calibrated to cut in. Let's say this is a 2040 switch. When the water pressure drops to 20 PSI, it's gonna turn the pump on. And when it reaches 40 PSI, it's gonna cut that pump off. So a 2040 switch would operate between 20 PSI and 40 PSI. Our standard switches that we sell are 4060 switches. So when you're setting up your pressure tank, the last step in the, in the setup is making sure that you know what type of pressure switch you have. If you bought it from us, you have a 4060 pressure switch. And you wanna calibrate the air pressure in this pressure tank to correspond with that cut in pressure. So we always set our pressure tank air pressure to two PSI less than our cut in pressure of the pressure switch. If this is a 4060 pressure switch, which it is, our cut in pressure is 40 PSI, which means that we wanna make sure that before any water gets in, that this has 38 PSI of air pressure in the bladder. If you bought it from us, this is already pre-charged. This comes to you at 38 PSI and it corresponds with the 4060 pressure switch. But uh, if you buy it somewhere else, check the paperwork. It may say pre-charged at 38 PSI or 28 PSI. Or you can find the air port. We can stick a pressure gauge on there. If you have a bike pump, that's a great way to do it. Just stick it on there, see what the pressure is, and make sure that it's two PSI less than the cut in pressure of your pressure switch. And that's it. That completes our installation of all the pump control components for your well or cistern setup. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And as always, all the products that we mentioned here, we stock in our warehouse. Please visit us at rainbrothers.com where you'll find the best pricing and the most expertise on these, um, these components. Thank you for watching.